Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to something a little bit different on the channel. This isn't really like a Let's Play or regular video. Um, today, I am talking to Mr. Simon Vickland, voice of Bane in Payday 2 and music composer. Um, so, hello, Simon. Hello. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I gave you a little bit of an introduction. Would you like to introduce yourself for anyone who may not know you, who's not part of the Payday community? Uh, well... Uh... Uh, my name is Simon. I'm 36 years old, and I've been doing music for video games since the year 2000. Um, first time, you know, people maybe started recognizing my name was when I did the music for Bionna Commander Rearmed uh, back in 2008. That was right in the beginning of when these uh, retro style games and the PlayStation Network and, and Xbox Live type yeah the indies you know, the indie and the, the yeah. smaller style of games you know the downloadable uh, non triple a things started to get really big on the consoles um and um it was a pretty cool thing to be a part of that i i did the uh, music for that game as well as the creative direction so that's really something i'm i'm proud of uh yeah. and since then i've been working on um uh the payday series pretty much um yeah. That's that's uh, that's what I've done since. Yes, yeah, so that is a question. How exactly did you get involved with like Starbreeze and Overkill becoming the voice of Bane and doing the music for Payday? Did they sort of contact you, or did you go to them? Uh, actually, I was I was one of the founders of of uh, oh. uh, of um, Overkill. Yeah, <clears throat> and then um, Starbreeze bought Overkill. Yeah. So that's how I. And then you decided it. you wanted to be the voice of Bane and. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> we did. We we uh, we we started um, with uh, Overkill. We started thinking maybe we should do like because we'd been doing. We, we were a bunch of guys who had been working on uh, 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 on uh, at Grin. Yeah, and two other guys were the founders, the founders of Grin, Bo and Ulf, and uh, so we were like eight guys from Grin, um, and. Uh, at first, we thought, okay, maybe we've done this, you know, triple A, you know, third person adventure or, you know, first person action, you know, thing enough. And we should start trying, you know, making apps or small, you know, iOS games and stuff like that. So How in the beginning, we sat, we sat for a few months actually and just started, you know, trying to hatch ideas for what could be the next, you know, whatever was popular back then. I don't know, Doodle Jump. <laughs> and, um, and um, pretty much, um, you know, weeks afterwards, we we just uh, we, we I don't know we grew tired of it. Uh, Ulf had the idea that maybe we could, like he said, I have this idea for a game, uh, and the elevator pitch, you know, the the short one sentence pitch, is uh, it's um, left for for dead with police instead of zombies, um, and we were all like, that sounds really cool. And we couldn't believe anyone. No one had done that before, really. Uh, you know, cops versus robbers is such a classic, you know, concept. Yeah. Um, with children playing it, you know, from from young age, and and you, so you know the conflict, and and you know that the the robbers want money inside the bank, and they take hostages, and we just started thinking of you know game playing concepts. Oh yeah, you take hostages, and then you know you release hostages to get to trade with your teammates that's been killed and blah, 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 stuff like that. So um, we started making that game and, and um, I think 20 months later, we released it. So, um, uh, and I was the voice of Bane already in that first game. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that, at that point, it was mostly a production uh, type of decision rather than like a, an aesthetic or, a, you know, um, create creative decision like oh yeah. you're such a good voice actor you should do this that's that wasn't the case it was mostly that that um i could do a, a fairly convincing you know uh, american accent and i could um it was easy to have someone on the team be the voice of the guy who guides you through the levels because then we could make last minute changes and i could re-record the narration for the level yes yeah, so you wouldn't have to <clears> you know, bring that, someone in Exactly. Instead of ha having to contact like a studio, you had to to uh, you know rent a studio and have 
the guy come in and record and maybe you know it, it would be a hassle so it was a good thing to have that voice be one yeah. of the guys uh or be the guy you know who 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 guides the player um and yeah. uh then and uh, Ulf, is, Ulf, so well Ulf, Ulf was one of the um the the four robbers and that was also more mostly like well that's easy and also it was a budget thing because the first game was really a shoestring budget type of story yeah and um the rest is pretty much history because now the payday franchise has become pretty big. It's just sort of exploded into this yeah. giant thing. Um, did you actually ever really expect that payday would become this? Or do you think like when you guys started developing it, was it like, oh, we'll just make this little project and we'll move on to bigger things? Or did you actually think it would explode into this giant thing that it became? Uh, no, I don't think... Well... We, we we could be hoping for it, but yeah, no one really expected it to be that. You no, know, we were just happy to be able to continue making games and and uh, you know put food on the table, yeah. uh, doing that, which is a dream come true in itself. But then the 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 concept being so well received and the game becoming such a big hit and a big seller, is a, is a yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it, it sounds pretty cool to like see essentially something that's basically your baby just grow into this giant thing with thousands of players worldwide, just experiencing something that you can yeah. make. Yeah. And it, I mean, if, especially if you look at the first game, it's really like a garage type of, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, we scan uh... our own faces and put on the characters uh, you know, from the, the the people in the team, scan scan. We took took photos of our own faces and and um, put it on the civilians and the robbers and and um, uh, we did some voice acting ourselves. You know, in the in the first game, Bo was the voice of uh, Mitchell, the guy who who uh, orders you to come and fix his plumbing problem. Yeah. Uh, in uh, was it counterfeit in the counterfeit um, heist and. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like little little um, indications of, of um, uh, or like f f fingerprints from from, yeah. from the small from the small team um, in that game. It's very, I yeah, think it shines, it, it shines through in a in a charming way. Yeah, Payday the Heist has a very good charm to it. Um, I like to see it as like Payday the Heist is like Payday Two's alpha or like beta. So it's like, this is what the game started off as, and it became Payday 2. But yeah, uh, either way, it's still a very nice, very polished game. I like mm -hmm. um, jumping into it. So uh, this might you might not be able to answer this, considering you founded the company, but do you have any advice for people who want to be like into the industry, like make music for games or voice characters for games? Do you have any advice for new people who don't know where to start or... Like well, I, I always, I always, my, my, I get this question quite a lot. And, um, um, the fact <laughs> is that I got into the business pretty much only through contacts. I knew Ulf from high school. So we went to the same high school together. Yeah. Uh, so I knew him from, you know, before he started, he founded Grin. Um, but even when he founded Grin, uh, and they started making games, I still had to, kind of audition for to to, to, to be the guy who, who made the music they yeah. actually already had a guy who, who was going to make the music for their first game and i yeah. said can i can i try out and they were like yeah well if you like make a couple of demo songs and if we like it maybe you can do the you know the music in collaboration with this guy we already have and it turned out that they liked my music so much that they <laughs> kicked the other guy out and uh wow. so from then on it was me. so um i've been doing like um i i was lucky yeah uh, that i i knew someone who who started a company and the fa like the, the fact that that company went on to become some something big you know because grin went on to make uh, a couple of really big uh games and, and big productions and uh, yeah. i was involved in all of them either making music or directing voice actors or or um, making sound effects and being, you know, the sound designer. Yeah. 
So uh, um, contacts is important. And the, the only way pretty much you can you can make contacts when you're you're uh, you know up and coming, I would say is to make contact with people who are um, you know potentially becoming part of the game business, uh, which of course means you have to have patience because they are not inside the business yet, but they might become you know so you just have to wait it out. Uh, the the best suggestion I would I would give there is to just you know um um make mods and make you know get, get in contact with people who make like small small games or mods or indie games and that kind of you know uh smaller teams and yeah. um make demos of your music of your of your songs of uh, of your voice and just s spread it out you know and and make sure that it gets uh you have a website where the people can visit and uh, just write fairly short emails to to people, just inviting them to to check your stuff out. Yes. Uh, you can't yes. expect manage your expectations. You know, you can't expect to get, you know, be a voice actor on the next Mass Effect game when you're, or if you're a composer to get music on, in the next, you know, whatever uh uncharted uncharted game or something like that when you're starting out so you just have to start small uh and there's a lot of games you know even even if you don't think that uh iphone games or or cell phone games are cool that's still a, a place where you can get in contact with people who might you know if you if you get your music in that type of game you still have your foot in the in the door so to speak yeah so oh, that, seems that's, like, that, yeah, that seems like pretty good advice. Yeah. Pretty, uh... Uh, but other than contact, I think, you know, just be tenacious, you know, perseverance and, uh, and uh, talent are two things. Like, if you don't have talent, you can, you can I think you can, for the most part, you know, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, I, I have no idea how to help you. I'm crap with words. Uh, no, but um, it's if you don't have it, you can compensate by um, having contact and uh, and um, working hard. You know, hard work and contacts could compensate for not being maybe as you know talented as James Horner or you know some big type composer. Yeah, of course you can't have a total lack of talent. Uh, when you're doing something as creative as as being a composer, uh, but you know you can you can compensate. So those are the three key aspects I think: hard work, talent, uh, and talent would be what you're born with, and that you know that can't be taught, uh, and um, um, contacts. And of, out of those three, I think having at least two uh, would be, be able to secure your job. Yeah, exactly. That's necessary. So try to try to take a hard look at yourself and see do I, do I have the talent and of course if you have passion for something then the hard work will be easier to do because you love what you're doing uh, so uh, passion can be easily um, converted into a really useful uh, it's a useful currency so to speak yeah um, well that, that, that makes sense I mean I guess if people don't have passion there's no point really going for an industry no um, yeah so to talk about your music a, bit, a, lot, a lot of people yeah. get into stuff just because it seems prestigious to, to them oh yeah but i don't get that i mean it's like do something because you want to do it not because it looks good mm -hmm. exactly um, yeah so to talk about your music um when you're creating music for payday do you first like having do you get told what music needs to be made or do you look at what the new heist is going to be or the new update and then make music around that or are you directed how does uh, the music making thing work for payday for the most part i just you know wing it yeah because <laughs> i create i, I kind of <coughs> created the sound or yeah. the uh, the style for payday so i have kind of a good you know feeling for it or a good feel for just you know how it's supposed to be and 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 then if if it's an indoors level where you're in a laboratory and the, the surroundings are really pristine and everything is clean, then maybe I go for something that's 
that has that type of sound, which is more electronic and you have the synthesizer sounds and it sounds more like it matches that environment. Whereas yeah. if you're in, you know, a, you know, shanty town or, you know, a, a, you know, the dodgy end of town uh, and it's dark and it's more gritty, the environment, then I can go from something that's more like distorted and it could have guitars and it could have more like thrashy, you know, drum loops and stuff like that. And it's less of the electronic stuff or it's electronic stuff that more leans, you know, towards something that's more rock uh, or something like that. Um, and then I just get the scenario, you know, um, someone to tell me the scenario. And if it's really stressful, then I go for up tempo. And if it's not, then I can do pretty much, you know, any tempo I want. So, yeah. So uh, do you, um, do you see like the actual map is the map made and then the music is made or is it made alongside each other? They're made um, al alongside <clears throat> each other. I can go talk to the level designers. Okay. Uh, uh, but now that I'm freelancing, they just send me like, you know, the, uh, a short description in text of what, what it's about. Okay. So, um, do you, uh, do you prefer freelancing to working at Overkill? Um, well, uh, I guess like yeah. working full time at Overkill, should I say? Uh, yes, yes, I do. I, uh, I think it's a, it was a really good decision. Yeah. It seemed quite wise. Like, um, I remember reading the comments of the video where you announced you were going freelance. Everyone seemed very supportive of, uh, of you going, um, mainly because you said you stay on as Bane. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I don't think people would be happy if you left as um, <clears throat> left as Bane. So one reaction I'm well, not really reaction. One thing I'm curious about is during the Goat Simulator DLC trailer, Bane sounds extremely confused. Was that your actual reaction to being told you're making a Goat Sim DLC, or there's going to be a Goat Sim Simulator DLC? <laughs> Because it sounded uh, quite organic, Bane's reaction. No, that was, of course, I get the, I mean, they wouldn't put something in the trailer that doesn't sound like they want it to sound. Yeah. So they, they, well, they directed me and told me to sound, uh, you know, a little bit like, uh, guys, this is going to be a weird one. Like, and I gave them a couple of, a handful of different takes and they, they just yeah. chose one that they liked. So, uh, yeah. But it's it not, did sound it, like that's not Bane Simon's reaction. reaction. That's that's how Bane was supposed to sound. Yeah. Um, so do you actually ever, like, apart from making music, do you actually ever play the games you make music for? Or do you just make the music and then you're done? You're not really interested in video games? I used to play a Payday the Heist. I used to play Payday 2. But, you know, uh, I'm, I've went, I've, you know, yeah. grown tired of it, which... Uh, uh, you know, people do, I guess. It's understandable, yeah. I mean, I guess if you, like, work for something and then you play it loads, you get burnt out. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, there are people out there who have played, you know, a thousand hours or more, and that's, uh, like, really cool that they like the game so much. Uh, yeah. And I, even though I was on the development team, I haven't played the game that much. And I've been playing the game, you know, running around, just trying out, you know, how does the footstep sound on concrete? How does the footstep sound on, on gravel? How does the footstep sound on, you know, and testing stuff like that. And that's hours and hours and hours even before the game is any fun to play. Uh, and then, of course, when the game takes shape and you can you can actually, you know, start shooting at enemies and it becomes a challenge and, you know, that is really fun. And then you have hours and hours and fun of fun just trying that out and trying out the weapons and hearing how the weapon sounds and oh this is how the echo of the weapon sounds in in a narrow space and this is how it sounds out on in the open and you you try out stuff and it's and then and then it's fun and then the game is released and you continue playing it because it's fun to you know jump yeah. into a game and just play with others who haven't seen the game before and just you know hearing their reactions and just you know being part of that you know, whole thing where, where the, okay. when the game is new, but then uh, by then you've played the game so much that you, as a developer, you you're you know you are going to grow tired of the game before people who who play the game as as consumers. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense if you work on it that much. Um, so if you are still a fan of video games, what are your current favorite video games or games that you've been playing a lot recently? If you still play games. Uh, I, I play less games that I, than I should, but <laughs> I've, the uh, last few years, uh, what's worth mentioning, I guess, is Destiny. I played a lot. 
and I still play Destiny quite a lot. I think it's it's brilliant. There's a lot of like grinding stuff. Uh, in yeah, it's Destiny like Payday in space then. Well, the, the Payday's very <laughs> grindy. Yeah, uh, I mean, we reported different takes on you know when Bane. We knew that people are going to play the level over that the game expects the player to play a level over and over again. Yeah, and then we at least put some random you know things in there. Even with the narration, Bane can say every every um uh what is it um objective description is recorded in three different wordings so that every time you play it you can never anticipate exactly how bane is going to say it yeah uh which is nice and i mean a production like destiny which is a uh, hundred times the size and the a hundred times the budget of of payday 2 should be able to to do that but still it's they don't have that in that game. But uh, what's good with this, and I think, is the weapon handling and the the first person shooter mechanics yeah. and is really tight. You know, in terms of shooting at the enemies and the enemies, you know, throwing themselves behind a cover and you've got the grenades and you got the. It's really tight, uh, and I like yeah. that. And then you, you can you can um, um, complain about you know the grindiness of it and uh, you know all these different assets and. Uh, valuable you know you have to collect all these stuff and, and merge them and, and it's just you know this whole grinding thingy but uh i still enjoy it and then i bought uh the um division last week uh, and i've been playing that for like 10 hours so so far so not yeah, not Tom a lot his line simulator <laughs> it's very popular I, uh i'm enjoying it and uh if you play with friends of course it becomes uh, a lot more enjoyable yeah me and my team have been discussing doing some series on it but i can't self-promote here but yeah um do you ever play a game and go and like just because you're a sound designer obviously do you ever play a game and just dislike it because of the sounds or do you ever stop to in a certain part of the game to like shoot a gun test its sounds oh yeah yeah, yeah. You, you get um uh, uh damaged <laughs> as a consumer that way i mean you have you you will carry that with you from from, from working with it so yeah then that happens that happens a lot but it also happens you know in a positive way that you can really enjoy like when oh wow they've managed to do this thing that i've been trying for years or the thing that i find so very hard to to nail they've really done it in this game and then you get a little bit jealous and but you can enjoy the the uh craft you know yeah I, mean, I guess it makes sense. So it's when you see something like that. One thing I am curious about, though, is um, with weapon sounds, specifically in Payday, the weapon sounds sound very realistic. Um, do you actually go to like a shooting range of fire guns there, or do you artificially make the sounds, or do you have like royalty free stock sounds, or how exactly do weapon sounds get created for games like Payday? Uh, for Payday, we decided that we would create the sounds based on uh, samples. Um, like the dry, the, the sound yeah. of the actual weapon that you're holding in your hand uh, is something that we've just kind of composed from different, you know, uh, explosions and pops and, and mechanisms. And, and so that's pieced together, so to speak, in a, in a sound design program. Yeah. Uh, but the echoes, we wanted to record ourselves. Uh, and in Sweden, it's really difficult to get a hold of a, a fully automatic weapon. Uh, but we figured for the Echoes, we don't really need fully automatic weapons. We can really, I mean, the size of the bullet is the important thing, not whether there are several bullets being fired in a row. Uh, so the caliber was the most important thing. So we just went to a gun range and fired with different hunting rifles and pistols and things that you can actually get a license for in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And then we placed microphones all around uh, and recorded some whiz bys and some, you know, um, um, yeah, just weapon, the, the weapons, you know, echoing through a forest and, um, you know, the surroundings around that gun range. And then we could, for the fully automatic weapons, we could just create, you know, a loop from those by piecing together several of those, those, uh, echo, echo sounds. So the echo sounds in the game are actually recorded specifically for the game by sound designers of, of the game none of which actually work at the company anymore but um we had a great day uh, at a shooting range uh in a suburb 
uh, just south of Stockholm, uh, recording that stuff. And I think, think it turned out really nice. And as you say, I mean, it sounds realistic, and it's. Yeah. I think it's a huge, a huge part of it is because of the, the echo, uh, or the re- reflections. Yeah, Payday sounds are very good. Like I remember first playing Payday, I was like, "Wow, these sounds are quite realistic," compared to other games I've played. Um, so now I do have some questions here that are from Reddit, uh, from the Payday, uh, the Heist community on Reddit. I have some questions for you. So nice. Ari Licht would like to know. Uh, are you ever go? Are you ever planning to put your payday music on Spotify or any other website where people can buy it um, and download? That was that was one of the last things I I was working on before I I uh, quit Starbreeze, and uh, I left that to other people within the company, so it's actually not up to me. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, whether it's whether just... those people are whether those people who still work at Starbreeze who have taken over my duties yeah. are actually. Bring that, bringing that home is is uh, really up to them. But I think it's I know that it's coming. Like I I I mastered, I remastered the first the original fifteen songs that was released on the original when the when the game came out. We just had fifteen songs on the soundtrack, yeah. and then success you know um, gradually it's grow it's been growing. Uh, so we we're going to release the first fifteen tracks as volume one, and then track 16 to 30 i suppose then would be volume two and then 31 to 45 would be volume three or something like that okay. because we can't we can't uh if we release a soundtrack now uh it just it would be weird because then in a month there's going to be you know two new new songs and they won't be on um spotify because uh you can't update spotify and just add another track on an existing yeah, album it's not like, like a website like, yeah, like you can on uh, Bandcamp, which is a luxury on Bandcamp, uh, or on Steam. Yeah. So, uh, you know, iTunes and Spotify and other sites like uh, Amazon do- Amazon Download and, and things like that, they don't work like that. So we're going to portion it out, you know, and and, and um, release it in different segments. Okay. So Great. it's going to come to Spotify. Uh, <coughs> pretty sure. Okay, so it's coming to Spotify soon. just... <clears throat> soon oh, yeah and it, soon. but just ex- ex- expect it to be the first 15 tracks and then it's going to be uh further down the line we're gonna i th- th- they're gonna release more okay uh raven kujikawa wants to know uh when do you plan to release steal from the rich to the b-sides track uh, um <laughs> you've been asked this before haven't you just oh yeah many times um yeah it's it's um, it's just that that project on my computer crashed, so I couldn't uh, load it into my music, uh, the program that I use to make music. So I have to solve that problem first. And uh, you know, first things first, I have orders or I have you know commissions from from uh, clients. Um, yeah. Among them are Starbreeze, and I have to make that music first, you know, and, and continue making this stuff for the. The upcoming heists and the upcoming whatever yeah. so i can i can um, fix that problem when i have the time but i i haven't had the time really yet you know okay so i really don't have an answer i i have a reason <laughs> for why it has taken so long but i don't have an answer for when i will have the time to put it in but okay. i guess uh you know uh, if you wait you know those who live will see, as we say in Sweden. It's coming before half of three. You can confirm that, right? Yes. <laughs> there you go. As soon as I as, as soon as I see uh, uh, advertising for Half Life Three, I will really get working on that stuff. So okay, to so... make sure that it comes before. Okay, good. So that that gives Valve even more reason to start working. Um... <laughs> Okay, uh, Saber Taser would like to know, what is your favorite track from the Payday 2 soundtrack? I think it's um, uh, the Shadow Raid track. Yeah. Track with the, the bass that... <laughs> and the drums, that really drum and bass style drums. Yeah. Uh, I really like that, that track. I'm personally and, a big uh, fan of Evil Eye. 
I like Evil which came with Hotline Miami DLC. Yeah, and that was really um, um, made for uh, for um, for the game. Yeah, even so, it's not it's not ending up on the soundtrack. No, it was on the soundtrack, right? It was I think the, so. It was the uh, uh, Breath of Death, wasn't? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, Evil Eye was also one of those tracks that I've been working tracks that I've been working on at home, and uh, and they wanted something that sounded like Hotline Miami, and I <laughs> figured, well, I do Hotline Miami style music on my spare time, so maybe I can take one of those tracks and, and put yeah, it in. Yeah, I think in. you hit it quite well. It sounds very Hotline Miami. Mm. Like uh, when we first heard it, we originally thought it was Denneton who made it, not Payday, but then it was like, oh no, Simon made it. I like them. Um, August. Yeah, I take I take pride in in in, in um, convincing people that I can <laughs> I can fooling people into believing uh, that I can um, um, master any style of music. Well, that you've technically already answered the last question we have, but uh, you'll see. Anyway, uh, Agus Tricks wants to know. Um, what do you, the, how do you name your songs essentially? For example, Eve Lie and Dead Man's Hand. How exactly do you come up for the names of those songs? I, uh, originally, uh, I had like a text file with just, yeah. whenever I came up with a cool song name, I would just add a name, add that to the list on in that text file. And whenever I needed a name, I just went to the text file and saw the list and I, I just figured, okay, this is, this seems to fit with the song. Yeah. you know and uh i would have these titles that were more actiony like you know bulletproof or some cool you know something that sounded more like it was more about you know shooting yeah. or surviving you know explosions and you know semtex or something just cool words or combinations of words yeah uh, and then i would have a different list further down where i had more like under the radar or, you know, something that sounded more like it was a clandestine operation or a stealth type mission. So uh, I could, depending on the style of music, I could go to the, these two different lists and just pick a name that seemed to fit the music that I had made. Uh, and, but now for the most time, for the most part, I I, um, I just uh, come up with the name on the spot. Like when, when I'm going to, when I've created the first something that's good enough to save as a music project on my computer. Uh, and I hit the save button for the first time and the program asks, asks me to come up with something. Uh, I just uh, sit for a minute and ah, this is blah, and it becomes something. And then for the most time, for the most part, that sticks. Uh, but I've also been known to go on Twitter and just ask, like, what's it come up with names and then I just pick a name from from my follower followers followers on Twitter. Do you ever get some really weird responses that just? Oh yeah, a lot. <laughs> I have I have uh, quite a few <laughs> followers, and uh, some of them seem to be like dead set on messing with me from time to time and writing all these you know really weird responses. But it's fun. Yeah, I mean. Uh... I mean, it's like when someone asks you to name something, you're not going to give a serious name. Like, that's just, that's what a normal person would do. Um, I get a lo lot of, like, Darude, Sandstorm, you know, and that's Sandstorm, stuff, Darude. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you say what's the name of this song, everyone's going to say Darude, Sandstorm. Yeah. You know, it's it's like a, the loss of, of physics. It's going to happen. Yeah. It has to happen. Every YouTube comment's got it. Um, First. Heroic, yeah. Uh, Heroic Shepherd would like to know: uh, Is there any way to incorporate? No, sorry, um, is there any way to incorporate a song that they've bought from you from? Okay, to summarize: If they buy a song from you from Bandcamp, is there any way for them to get a Steam key to have it in game? Um, if it's from like a specific DLC, but they buy the song and they don't own the DLC. No. There's no connection between Bandcamp and, and Steam in any way, so there's no way to. You have to buy the soundtrack, <laughs> the soundtrack on Steam. Okay. And then it, that will unlock the all the all the music. Yeah, uh, that seems. Uh... For 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 all the for all future 
really. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, Box NZ uh, would like to know what's the trick of being really good at conveying atmosphere through music. Wow, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just you know, uh, if you if you can hear it, what's you know if you can hear when you uh, if if you know when you like something, if you know yeah. that oh that music really su- you know was really suitable or it was really. Um, it was really fitting to that scene in that movie or in that game when you played that stealth part and the music was really what was what was that music and then you can listen to that music and just you know reverse engineer it just listen to you know what's the what's the energy is it up tempo probably not because it's it's a stealth part you know it's probably a lower tempo uh, yeah. but it has a, a nerve it has a, it has something something a pulse or something that give gives you this unnerving feeling. Uh, maybe it's like a you know uh, a violin, something like you know in the background or something high pitched. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, uh, like a just an egg or something you know shaky type of thing, or um, uh, some hi hat or something working in the background. And then maybe a bass line or something and just have these glockenspiel sounds or I don't know, whatever. You just yeah. listen to it and then you kind of make something, you know, then you know the ingredients and then you just, you know, cook your own recipe from that. Uh, it's not too difficult, really. So if you know what you like, then you should be able to reproduce it. You know, it's not yeah. it's not rock and, rocket science, really. So um if that's how I do it, you know, if I, I take inspiration from, from sources that I, where I think that they did the right thing, you know, the right choices. So I, and, and it's, it's a good thing in Petty too. I've had the freedom, you know, of being able to take inspiration from all different kinds of music. So I fuse drum and bass with rock, with house and uh, you know even classic you know Hollywood style music, and I can just you know mix and match. So there's really no boundary to what you can do in that game, and that's a luxury really. Um, so I can I can just listen to any you know born supremacy scene, and I can take inspiration from that, or I can I can t- you know take inspiration from a game or something, and and it doesn't really matter what type of music it is. I can. Yeah. It's probably gonna fit payday. <coughs> okay, that was a good answer. Um, uh, Uncle Farter Five, lovely name. Uh, would like to know roughly how far away is your CS:GO music kit, um, and are you still working on it? Yeah, I uh, had the guitarist that's gonna help me with the guitars uh, uh, here last week, and he um, was gonna help me with the music kit, but. <laughs> Uh, we didn't take too much time with that because I asked him to help me with some guitars for the next song that I'm doing for Petty Two instead. Ooh, so there's going nice. to be some really nice uh, fat guitar sounds in the in the next or the maybe the uh, after the next. <laughs> uh, I don't really know the the release schedule for it, but um, um, so we haven't prioritized the music kit yet. Uh, I was hoping that I could finish it now in March. But it seems that this guy is really busy, so he can help me in April. So I mean, maybe it's going to be out in the summer or something. Okay. Uh, it's going to take it's going to take a few months, I suppose, before you guys can hear it. So uh, apologies, but um, I work slowly. But then again, your work is when it's finished. It sounds amazing. So, well, I'm glad people think that. So <laughs> that that, yeah. that compensates maybe for the fact. Maybe for the time. Um, Nibble Jack would like to know, can you tell us anything about your next project with or without Overkill? I can not. Oh. Famous but I got, I got cool stuff on the horizon. And I, I was actually offered a freelance job uh, as late as yesterday. Hmm. Uh, and I'm gonna, we're going to book a meeting and we're, we're going to see how that turns out. Okay. So that sounds so uh, a bit that, interesting. That sounds 
yeah, it was really interesting to me because it's n n unlike anything I've done before. Uh, almost child, you know, almost, I don't know, I can't, I can't say anything about it, but uh, okay. it, it, uh, it, may, it, it might turn out that uh, I'm not doing it for one reason or okay, another. Okay, so it's a big maybe at the moment. It's a big maybe, but, you know, I'm, I'm, um, <coughs> I yeah. got stuff, I got stuff coming. Okay. Um, and finally, the weirdest question we received, the Steam would like to know, uh, are you a god among men or some kind of other deity-like entity? And if so, did you, or if you're not, did you so sell your soul to the devil for your spectacular music talent? <laughs> Someone uh, wants to know this. Yes, I'm most, I can say, uh, I'm most certainly not a god. <laughs> a god I, haven't men, sold, I haven't sold my, um, my soul to the devil. <laughs> So, uh, I, am so uh, I can't, I can't, I can't really, um, I can't really say why, um, anyone would think my music is so good that, that, they think you're that would be the, that would be the, in, uh, the explanation to why it's good. But, uh, it's nice to hear that people enjoy the music so much. Yeah. Well, on that, uh, delightful question, um, I guess we'll wrap up this interview. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Payday 2 content and check out Simon Vickland in the description, his Twitter and his website will be in the description below. Uh, thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. Ta-ra.